And in James chapter 5, we're going to start looking at the 17th verse of James chapter 5. And James chapter 5, verse 17 says this. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain in the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the rain, and the heavens gave its rain on the earth, and it produces crops. Let's pray. Our gracious great heavenly Father, I just ask you to take the illustrations of my heart and my mind and use them for your good, Father, because they have come to hear from you and not from me. Go ahead and pray. As I came across this scripture, and one of the things that I was talking about, one of the things that hit me about a year or so ago, what was as I was looking at this was this simple prayer. And so many times we read this, we we look over the scripture, we kind of fly by it really quickly. But I really want to dive into this scripture today, and I want to look and see five different things about this scripture. Five different things about this scripture. And the first thing I want to talk about is why in the world would Elijah pray for this to happen? Why? Why in the world would Elijah want to pray for no rain? And we find the answer to this question in 1 Kings chapter 17. In 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah finally shows himself. And when Elijah, when he saw Elijah, he said, Is that you, you troublemaker of Israel? Now, let's get this straight. Arab sees Elijah for the first time in three and a half years. The last time they spoke, Elijah told the king, It is not going to rain except by my word. And then he left. And then three and a half years later, the king sees Elijah and he goes, is that you, you children maker of Israel? Now, you understand why he's a little hostile, right? It ain't rained for three and a half years. Crops have died. <coughs> Animals have died. People have died. And in his secular mind, Arab is thinking, this is all your fault because you said you were going to pray this way. But hear what it says. I have not made trouble for Israel, Elijah replied, but you and your family's house have. You have abandoned the Lord's commandments and have followed Baal. See, what we have here is we have a problem with a nation that has totally left God. <coughs> we have a nation that has totally abandoned their association with God. Sound familiar? For the first time in my life, in many of your lives, you are seeing a post Christian nation. It used to be when my dad was growing up that even if someone wasn't a Christian, they still respected Christian values. They still respected Christians for their values. And they still had a lot of the Christian values, even if they wasn't Christians. To now where we are mocked, we are persecuted, we are called haters because of our values. Because we choose to serve God, we are the hated ones. We are the ones who are narrow-minded. We are the ones who are ignorant. Because this world has turned, this nation has turned from God. And that only causes all kinds of problems. So the reason why Elijah prayed was because his nation decided to turn from God. And not understanding that there is only freedom that you can find and only happiness that you can find is when you find it in God. And when you follow God's rules. And when you follow God's guidelines. Because he is the one who laid them out so that you can have a good and great and blessed life. 
for Christmas, Phoebe got some Legos. And, and you know those Lego kits, you know what I mean? And, and, and uh, she got she got three different ones. She got a, a, a three different Pokemon ones. You could turn into a Squirtle, to a Wartortle, to a Blastoise, or a Venusaur, um, a Bulbasaur, an Ivysaur, a Venusaur, or, or a Charmander, Charmeleon, Charizard. You know? So she's just, yeah, I know them all. But anyway, she's, she's in there, she's playing over, and, and she's doing it, and she comes to me every now and goes, Daddy, I, I don't know where this goes. And I'm like, ah, Hannah. <laughs> like an engineering problem. Come here, Hannah. All right. Because there's clearly outlines in how things go. I was never good at Legos. Okay? I got to tell Trisha the devil. I was happy if I made a car with gold. <laughs> Look at that. Okay? But there are clear instructions of how to do things when you're putting this Legos together to get the outcome you want. It's the same thing. God gave us clear outlines on what he expected and what he wants his people to do so that we can get the outcome that he wants. See, they had turned to Baal worship. Now, that is a horrendous, disgusting God. Baal had his wife, and, and what they would think is that in the fall time, they would start to fall asleep. And in the winter time, they would sleep. And in the springtime, that's when they woke up. And when they woke up and they hadn't been together for six months, of course, they got excited. They would consecrate their marriage. And in the consecration of their marriage, that's when everything would start to bloom and everything would start to grow. And that was the mindset of this bell worship. That was the mindset of this bell worship. To the point where, to celebrate the spring, they would have these massive orgies in the streets. And, and, the, and, the, and the priests would cut themselves with swords and knives to wake up the prophet and the god, Bell. And if that didn't work, in cases like this where there was severe, severe famine, they would turn to human sacrifice. <coughs> and they would light this fire up and they would get this really hot iron statue of Bell. And they would lay the babies on the fire and burn them alive. To the point where archaeologists found literally thousands of clay pots full of remains. See, they turned from the true God to a false God that led them astray. I'm afraid it's the same thing with our nation. They have turned away from true God, and they don't understand, and they don't know what they should be doing, and they're just finding whatever they can, whatever they think can make them happy, or trying it. And they're finding themselves being miserable and miserable and miserable because the instructions to a happy life is right there. Now, question number two that I have is why no rain? Where did they come up with this no rain idea? Well, in Deuteronomy, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, in verse 15, God says, However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and are not careful to follow all his commandments and decrees, I give you today, all his curses will come on you and overtake you. And all these curses come through, and you can read this whole entire rest of this chapter, there's nothing but curses. But here down in verse 23 and 24, it says this, The sky overhead will be bronze, and the ground will be iron. And the Lord will turn the, uh, and the, Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust of the power, and it will not come down from the sky, and they will be destroyed. See, what Elijah knew was he knew what the Word of God had said. How many of y'all have ever been really, really tired? Have anybody ever been tired and you promised your kids something? You said, man, if you clean your room, we'll play this game tonight, or we'll, we'll go here, or we'll go get this, or, you know, just something, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just one of those little promises you make. And, and you make this promise, and you go, hey, kid, you get this done for us, and later on we'll do this, and then time slips by, and you're ready for bed, right? I mean, I know this happens to me all the time. And then all of a sudden, Karen will come up, or Phoebe will come up and go, but Dad, you promised you promised that if we did this, we, we, we would go do this. Do you remember that? 
Did I say that? Yeah, Dad, you remember? It was at Bubba Bubba time. <laughs> you know, right before you ate chicken again. <laughs> and what we have to do then is we have to keep up to our word and go do what we promised. I don't know how many times I really want to go to bed and I have played, you know, some game with, with Phoebe or Hannah or, or Danielle. I try to lose as quick as I can. I really do. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, look, I went to jail again. Oh, darn. <laughs> I guess I don't get 200 to go. What I'm saying is simply this. When you know what you've been promised, you know how to pray. See, that's why it's so important to know the Word of God. Because one of the things that we as Christians need to do is we need to make sure that we are out there blessing our family and blessing those who are with us and blessing those who need blessed. But how can we bless somebody when we don't know what the Word of God says and how to bless them? That's why it's so crucial to bless people and know how to bless them. And I think that's one of the things in America and in our culture that we have got to do is we forgot how to bless our children. Because if we bless them and they are blessed, then nothing can curse them because they are blessed. And if they are blessed and if we are blessed, then we can follow God's commandments and we can walk in victory and we can walk the way God wants us to walk. So that's why it's so crucial for us to understand why we need the blessings. And if our lives are being destroyed, what God says about the curses. Because many times our lives fall apart because we are not following what God wants us to do. We're not. The thing that hit me most about Elijah's prayer was this. You think he was right? <coughs> you think he was right? <coughs> Think about all the damage, all the pain, all the destruction that that prayer caused. He earnestly prayed that it would not rain for three and a half years. This wasn't a nation that got its money and its food and its wealth from trade. They were primarily an agricultural nation. What Elijah was praying for was basically the destruction and the disaster and the ruin of this nation. First Kings 17, verse 1. Elijah says, As the glory of the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain for the next few years except by my word. And then he left and he went to a ravine and he sat by a stream and drank water and got fed by birds while his nation <coughs> suffered. Was he right? God answered his prayer. God heard it. Sometimes, I'm afraid, sometimes that people are so hard-headed, so stubborn, so unwilling to listen to God, that the only thing that shakes them is this answer. The only thing that wakes them up is when God gets their attention. And sometimes that's through some of the harshest ways. Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul says this in the first chapter, verse 1. There's actually a report of sexual morality among you, and the kind that doesn't even occur among the pagans. A man has his father's wife, and you're proud of this. Shouldn't you rather be filled with grief and have put this fellow out of fellowship? Even though I'm not physically present with you, I've already, I am in the Spirit, and I've already passed judgment on the one who's done this, as if I was present. 
When you are assembled together, you are assembled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I am with you in the spirit and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is present. Hand this man over to Satan, that his sinful nature may be destroyed and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord. Sometimes, my friends, we don't want to hear from God when things are going great in our lives. Sometimes it's not until our world is destroyed, our world's falling apart, our world is just total chaos that we look for God. And I'm afraid we have a nation and a group of people who are so strong-willed and so stubborn in their ways that I'm not sure what it's going to take when we see God. I'm not sure what it's going to take. But as this year comes, my last question to you is what are we going to do about this world? What, 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 are, what are we going to do with this world? What are we going to do as Christians? We are coming up on a new year. And we're all going to make these New Year's resolutions. There are a lot of us going to make these New Year's resolutions. I would love it. I would love walking to Walmart. You walk into Walmart at any time this week until the next week, and you'll see weight equipment everywhere. You'll see slim fast in the middle of the aisles. Okay. All right. You'll see you'll see treadmills. You'll see weights. You'll see gym memberships. You'll see all kinds of things about losing weight. You go two more doors down or two aisles down, and then there's totes full. Organize your house because there's two things I'm going to do. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be more organized this year, right? <laughs> Let me just tell you what's going to happen. Come February 1st, all that stuff is going to be half price, put in the back of the store, and you know what's going to be in the middle of the house? Chocolate. <laughs> 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 you know why? Because they know you don't last in the month. You ain't gonna make it no longer. Here comes Valentine's. Here, have some candy. Yeah. What I want for us is a commitment to see people saved, to see people come to Christ. That we pray for people and that God intervenes in their lives and they come to know the one true God. And that means that we have to be the ones who show it to them. Listen, this whole idea of doing and they will come is not right. We need to go out and we need to show the world Jesus. We need to be showing his love to everyone and everywhere we go so that we are a difference. And when people see that kind of difference in their lives, they go, I want what you have. What do I get? Because I can't find it in the world I live in. I want us as a church to be that way. I want us as a church to be the kind of church who loves the lost, who reaches them, who accepts them where they are and helps God bring them to where he wants them to be. Are you willing? Are you willing to make that kind of sacrifices, that kind of changes, that kind of prayer life? Are you willing to do that? Elijah prayed that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. And it didn't. And then he earnestly prayed that God would bless his land. And it did. My brothers and sisters, in you, hold every blessing and every curse of God. In you, have the power to show the laws Jesus as you are. If you have accepted that love, then you have that love to share it with others. But it's up to you to do it. Or you will. Because we're going to sing a song. If you need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, come to us today. Don't delay. If you're looking for a church home that's going to love you and accept you where you are and help you to grow to where God wants you to be, come forward today. That's what we're here. If you just need somebody to pray for you, 
situations you got going on in your life, I'm for today. But we're here. We're here to love you, pray with you, and give you everything we can to get you where God wants you to be. Last night, 98.